Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create three different types of video watermarks using Adobe Photoshop. For those of you who don't know what a video watermark is, it's that small little graphic in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And what this does is it allows viewers to easily subscribe to your channel without having to exit the video player. Uh, I do gotta mention, however, that it is only functional on desktop computers. While it does appear on mobile and tablet devices, you just can't select it. For those of you who don't use Photoshop or you just simply don't have the time to create your own, you can download all three of my video watermarks plus my Photoshop project files using the link in the description below. So now that you know what the video watermark is and how it can help increase your subscribers, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop and create our own. <laughs> Let's go ahead and begin this tutorial. What we'll be doing today is creating these three different watermark options here. Uh, we have two that are done in the traditional YouTube branding. Uh, so we're using a YouTube red uh, with a YouTube logo and a call to action subscribe. Uh, then we have two rectangular designs. Um, this design is what we'll actually be making. Uh, this would be more of a simplistic, uh, minimalistic um, rectangle. Uh, just in case you're looking for something minimal um, and it is also done using brand colors or your brand colors uh, so customized to your own channel uh, so these two uh, rectangle or square images do look similar but there is a subtle difference uh, this subscribe button is uh, fully opaque so you cannot see through it um, but by default, YouTube does add a subtle amount of transparency to your watermark so you can see through uh, the watermark and see some of the uh, video playing behind the image. Whereas this image right here has a little bit more transparency applied to it. So if you find that your um, watermark is just too vivid and you want it to be a little bit more subdued and you want to see through it just a little bit more, you're going to want to lower the opacity and I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then like I was saying, if, if you want to upload a rectangular image, uh, you really can't do it, or you can do it, but you're limited. Uh, so when you upload a rectangular image to YouTube, you can only sweat, select a square portion of that rectangle. So it, rather than uploading a rectangle, uh, you want to design a watermark that is contained within a square boundary. So we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to do that and how to create this negative space and also make sure that you're saving it as a PNG so you can get the full benefit of that transparency. All right, so let's go ahead and actually start creating these. Let's go and uh, open up Photoshop if you haven't done so already. Uh, select create new, open up your um, settings like this and type in the values that you see here. My document is gonna be 500 pixels uh, wide with uh, 500 pixels high. We'll be working at 72 uh, resolution, RGB color, and our background will be transparent. I am working a little bit larger than the minimum requirements for the watermark. I think they're 150 pixels wide and tall. Um, the reason we're working a little bit larger is so that it's just easier for us to see uh, the elements that we're adding to our document. Um, they will be crisp rather than pixelated. Uh, also, you'll just have a higher resolution image that you can um, upload to YouTube and the compression should be in your favor. So once you have your settings looking like this, go ahead and select create. Okay, so we will begin with the traditional YouTube branding uh, watermark where it's fully um, opaque red. Uh, to begin, we will add the red background. So come over here to your tools panel and we are looking for the rectangle tool. Uh, it is also the hotkey U. Once you have the rectangle tool selected, we need to change our uh, fill color. So come up to the fill color, select this little uh, swatch option box, the color picker, and then you, will, uh, you can either drag this to the top or to the bottom. You go all the way to the top and then drag this red all the way to the top right. 
you're looking for a hex value of FF with four zeros. I believe that is YouTube Red. Once you have that selected, go ahead and click on the document and type in 500 by 500 and hit enter. We'll then move this to the center by selecting our move tool and clicking and dragging until it's aligned in the center. The next thing we'll do is add the white uh, YouTube logo. So following that same steps, we'll deselect this rectangle by clicking in the rectangle or the layers panel. We'll go back over to the rectangle tool. We will select uh, our fill color and change it to a full white or a hex value of like five or six F's and hit OK. We'll then click the canvas and type in a value of 320 by 220. And then let's go ahead and align this in the center. To do that, I will come up here to the alignment options. Make sure that this is selected to canvas and then center align uh, horizontally and then center align vertically. We'll now round out these edges. I can click and drag this down to 30 pixels. The other option you can do is come over to your appearance panel and just type in 30. Now we're getting pretty close, but we need to distort this just a little bit to mimic the YouTube logo. So with this rectangle selected, let's go to edit, transform path, and warp. We'll come up to this drop down menu where it says custom and look for inflate. And now we can click and drag this to change the amount of warp. And we are looking for a value of 12. So I'm coming up to the bend and just typing in 12. I'm going to hit enter and then just click outside of the canvas. This will ask, do we, this operation will turn a live shape into a regular path. Continue. Yes. All right. The next thing we need to do is add a red play button. So I will deselect that rectangle by selecting um, somewhere inside the layers panel. We can then um, come over to our shapes tool once again, but this time we will hold, click and hold and look for the triangle tool. We'll come to the canvas, click, and for the triangle we'll do a width of 100 and a height of 90. The triangle was drawn in white uh, and we can change that. With the triangle selected, we'll just come up to fill and select the red that we just recently used. Okay, now we'll select the move tool. I'll come out to the corner of, um, just outside the corner of the um, play button until I see the rotate handle. And now I'll click and drag and I'll hold in shift to snap and make sure that my triangle is now pointing to the right. Okay, so now we're going to um, align this. So I'm going to select this path selection tool. I will now come up to my alignment options and select center align and center align. All right, so now that we have our YouTube logo created, we're going to move this up to the top third of our watermark. So to do that, I will select the triangle and also the rectangle by holding in shift. And now I will uh, hold the shift key and tap up and nothing's happening. So I need to select the move tool and now hold shift and tap the up key. And now I'm just eyeing it so that this uh, red play button is resting kind of on that top third of the watermark. All right, we're almost there. Last thing we need to do is add our call to action, which will be subscribe. So I'll come over to uh, the type tool. I'll select the type tool and now click and drag from the left side of the canvas to the right side of the canvas. I can now type in my call to action, which will be subscribe. For my font, I'm using Bebas New regular um, I recommend using a bold font, something that's kind of large uh, and visible, because when this image is actually applied to your watermark on YouTube, 
it's only 150 pixels wide or large so it will be relatively small so you if you if you want your call to action to be visible make sure you use a large font um next thing we're going to do is just drag this down using the move tool and I'm just kind of looking at the negative space. So this red space here, I'm trying to make it somewhat equal on the bottom and also having that same breathing room on the width as well. And I think that that looks pretty good. So if you're ready to save, all you have to do uh, is go file, export, save for legacy. Make sure that you have PNG selected uh, if transparency is selected, that's okay. Um, all you got to do is hit save and then save this document where you want. Even with transparency selected, since there's nothing that has transparency in our image, um, not, there won't be anything transparent. So uh, that's okay. I will show you how to make something transparent just right now. So let's go ahead and dive into that. So if you don't want the fully opaque um, watermark and you want something that's a little bit more subdue uh, then what I recommend is selecting this rectangle and all you got to do is go over here to your opacity options and then just dial this down uh, to maybe 90 lower if you need it and you can also apply it to these other elements as well but uh, for this tutorial we're only going to do the red so drop this down to 90 so now that we can see through that red and that means that we'll be able to see the video playing through um, on your channel and now we need to save this so let's go ahead and do that same process we'll go file export save for legacy and now you'll see that with that transparency um, check marked we can see that checkered background which is telling us that this image is transparent if we untick this, you'll see it goes full red. So now it is opaque. So just make sure that you have transparency selected. And if you can see this checkerboard pattern behind your image, that lets us know that your image is transparent and um, it can be seen through, or you can see through it. Uh, once you have your settings and it looks appropriate or looks correct, go ahead and hit save and save it to where you can um, locate it and upload it. Okay, the last option that I wanted to show you was the minimalistic branded design that was also a rectangle. So let's go ahead and we're going to um, duplicate this uh, rectangle layer. So I will right click and select duplicate, hit OK. I will hide the bottom layer and then with this duplicate selected, I need to return this to a value of 100 so it's not transparent. And then I'm gonna drag this down by holding in shift and click and dragging this as low as I want it to be. So that looks pretty good to me. I will now select my subscribe uh, call to action and I'm just going to nudge this down by holding shift and tapping the down arrow key until it is centered. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is just turn these two um, uh, logo elements off and I'm going to adjust the color to be more on brand with my channel. So with that red rectangle selected, um, you can change the color over here in your appearance panel. So if I wanted to do something that was more on brand with my channel, I could go ahead and change it to blue or you can change it to whatever color you want using that color swatch box. Um, the other thing uh, is that we need to make sure that this area out here is transparent. Um, while there won't be anything here, um, the image does recognize this space right here which will allow you to upload this rectangular image to YouTube and it will keep it um, as a rectangular shape. Whereas if you only had this rectangle uh, without this other extra um, uh, spacing in here, uh, like I said, you'll only be able to select that square constraint. So um, let's go ahead and save this one more time. 
using the same process, file, export, save for web legacy. Same thing, make sure that you have transparency ticked, make sure you can see the uh, grid background, uh, just to show you the difference. And once you have your settings like that, go ahead and hit save, and you're all done and set to go. And now we'll open up uh, YouTube and I'll show you how to upload these. Now that we have our watermark saved, let's go to your YouTube Creator Studio. You'll navigate down to your Customizations tab. You'll look for your Brandings tab, and then you're looking for this Video Watermark section. So let's go ahead and upload ours. So I'll go to Upload. I'll select the transparent option that we went with. I'll hit Open. It doesn't look transparent here, and that's because there's just no graphic behind it other than a solid color, so it looks fully opaque, but it is transparent. So we'll go ahead and hit done. You will then be um, given three different display options. So you can have it be the end of the video where your watermark will appear, I believe during the last 15 seconds of the video. You can select a custom start time. So if you want your video, uh, your watermark to show at the 10 second mark or whatever your desired uh, time is, you can enter that here. Or if you want it to show throughout the entire video, um, you can select this option. And this is what I go with, and this is what I would re recommend for you so that your watermark is consistent throughout all of your videos. Uh, once you have that selected, go ahead and hit publish. And then you are all finished. Go ahead and watch any one of your videos, and you should see um, your watermark appear and uh, being displayed with whatever option you chose here. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button below. I want to say thank you for watching. Until next time, peace out. Hey, what's Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you how to make three different types of video watermarks using Adobe Photoshop. For those of you who don't know what the video watermark is, <sighs> <laughs> blooper reel. <laughs>